Gideon Optics changes the way you enjoy your gun. From rifle optics like the Guardian LPVO to pistol optics like the Omega and Rock, Gideon Optics engineers sights and scopes packed with bleeding edge features and price them fairly for gun owners that require the best on the range, on duty, or on their hip. GideonOptics.com, where affordability meets quality. Save 10% with code FRN10. Now, to your podcast. Welcome to the Firearms Insider Gun and Gear Review Podcast, episode 553. This episode is brought to you by VZ Grips, Walker Defense, Primary Arms, and XS Sights. In this show, we'll be discussing a Snubby, Hawks 1-8, to Gerson's Brat, and some pivot light mounts. As you may know, we showcase guns, gear, and anything else you might be interested in. We do our best to evaluate products from an unbiased and honest perspective. I'm Chad Wallace, host of the most dedicated firearms podcast around. Co-hosts for tonight are Tony, Rob, and Rusty. Now, Yay! Rusty, you're up first today. All right. VZ Grips has been manufacturing handgun grips since 2003 with a reputation for quality, consistency, and innovation. Top tier manufacturers choose VZ Grips. They come in a variety of styles, patterns, colors, and are manufactured for proprietary G10, micarter, carbon fiber, or polymer. Available with a varying degree of texture, VZ offers a wide range of grips for all different firearm types. Made in the USA, VZ gives you the grip you can count on. And the grip of the week is the VZ320 for Taurus SF. Oh, that's the small frame revolvers. You know, I'm foreshadowing. Oh, here. okay. <laughs> The 320 threw me off there. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Right. It's some pattern they use every so often. You see it. Yeah, I like those. They're cool. Yeah. You know, if you got was the model uh, 85, that'd be perfect. Or, you know, the 650 we're talking about or the 605. Yep. Yeah, those. 605, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you use code GGR15, what do you get? 15% off? 15% off. Okay. Over and good at Raffle Grips at easygrips.com. I think it pretty much counts for almost anything they make just because they do have other stuff on their site is why because like if you buy one of the their daggers it works on those so i don't know but so they're non non writing number two pencils yep those two <laughs> yep those two so you stock up for those for shot show or you try to convince them to give you a bunch at shot show yeah uh, just try to get through security <laughs> before you get there <laughs> well i'll tell yeah. i'll tell you one thing couple years ago they gave me one of those pencils that shot show and when i it went all the way through and i didn't i don't check my luggage so you know it was in the backpack so that tells you anything just telling you so gsa nothing but our finest that's right uh who wants to go first on what they did Fine, I'll go first. Okay, Rob. Um, I was going to go and do something cool, but I got roped into working all weekend because our IT department decided to make some changes to our email rules, and I had to monitor my email all weekend. Well, that sucks. So, yeah, cybersecurity, where all good ideas go to die. Well, it's a black hole. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. Rusty, you're not muted. Well, you I got anything? Like I'm trapped in a bad billboard cartoon. You are. Uh, I, I did some deer hunting, uh, finished up... Uh, Black powder season here in Tennessee, and um, work on some review. Horse riding. And just some horse riding, some horse falling. Yeah, and, uh, falling and off. Then, yeah, falling offing, and uh, and uh, um, testing out a nineteen eleven from somebody we're not going to say just yet, <laughs> just to see if I can get and run. Then we'll see. We might have a after shot show review on that one. <laughs> we, we might have a before shot show review on that yeah, one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, shot show, it's a crap product. Let's make it a crap product. Exactly. We won't, we won't yeah. wait. We won't wait, but yeah, that's interesting. So, so you're doing more holster testing via horse, huh? Yes, I am. And, and so cold war can still feel over there. Cliff, sorry. Cliff over there is he, he makes some good stuff to be a one, a one horse operation. And so, Ah, I got the his, fun there. Yeah, it's the two of us outside the waistband holsters I've had. I've had different pistols in, and I've been on horseback and been bucked off. And let me tell you, I hit the ground pretty hard on both times. One time I got staples to the head, which y'all seen video of that. They didn't see me <laughs> on the show after. And this one, I got my foot hung in a stirrup and about broke my foot. 
and the 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 pistol never left the holster. And the holster that the guy he hasn't even released out yet. He sent it to me for um for evaluation. Yeah. yeah, and uh, well, it, it works. So huh? you know, if you see that style on his website, go and uh, pick it up because I and I can testify to it. I saw pictures of it, and it looks like a nice holster. I, I mean, I. Well, what, the the cool part is his the clips that he's using the the belt loops are carbon fiber ah instead of like the hard plastic right they're right carbon fiber they're thin carbon fiber that he's laser cut ah and um and bolted on or and um and I like it so far it, it holds snug and secure to the to the with the when your belt goes through there so and it doesn't he's trying it didn't break when you got bucked off the horse again so. Nope. Not at all. <laughs> I, I, I hear that. I hear that. Okay. So, Tony, you're up next. Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, I was not feeling well. So, I ended up <clears throat> not doing anything. Um, drove to uh, Union Hill Gun Club and actually dropped off the gift bags uh, for the kids' shoot. That was my whole plan, uh, was to do the kids' shoot. <laughs> that I do every year with CNJFO, uh, which is the Coalition New Jersey <laughs> something, firearms owners. <laughs> and uh, just my butt was kicked. I didn't want to get anyone sick because it's tight confines. So I brought in the gift bags and then I left before anybody really got there. So unfortunately, did nothing cool except drop bags off. But it was a great event. Uh, they introduced 30 kids to firearms, firearm safety, and they shot everything from uh, Keystone crickets to Henry Lever actions, and then just a buttload of 1022 Smith & Wesson victories, Volkorsens, I mean, just almost any 22 you can think of, uh, Eric has, including a 22 rolling block, uh, old school rolling block with like a... Uh, old school optic on it so it looks like a mini quigley down under nice and he also has a uh um a cricket uh mosin nagant uh, i remember when they made so, this so all that was there yeah so i missed i missed that but i'd rather do that to get people sick yeah yeah it's the responsibility stuff sucks <laughs> So, you know, hey, it is what it is. I actually made it to the range again, partly because I have that monolith and I don't have a chemo suppressor on it. Well, it just so happens that my friend, also neighbor, uh, neighbor being half mile away, uh, has one and was like, oh, I'm like, he's like, will that work? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, well, you want to meet at the range? And I'm like, sure. So. We ran probably 200 rounds through the suppressor on the monolith. Seemed to run okay. It does run way better with the standard spring. Uh, they send a suppressor spring for it, but it's more for suppressors that have a lot of blowback, and a lot of them nowadays don't. So, you know, hey, we did that. I did happen to shoot the 365 fuse because another guy I know was there also. So I shot it. And that other guy also, when Olight first came out with their O site, bought one and he had it on a 22 there, you know, after shooting it and hearing about it, what were they like a hundred bucks when they came out? Something like that. It's, it's nicer than I expected. And he said, he probably had it. He said, uh, probably two months or so before he had to charge it, uh, the, first, the you know, after charging it fully. It's got a big window. I can't say I hate it. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't have some of the fancy features, but, you know, just charge it up, especially if it's just on a range gun. It's It should work fine, and it's got a big window, so... There's that. That's the, one, that's the one with the chargeable hood, right? Y yep, yep, that the hood just charges on it. And like, like I said, when they first came out, they were like a hundred bucks or something. And yeah, I was, I was more impressed with it than I expected to be. So there's that, uh, trying to think I had, didn't really do much else. Mm, yeah, pretty much nothing. 
<laughs> but at least at least I did something. So putting some more rounds through stuff. So that leads us into bandwidth sponsor, our friends over at Patriot Patch Co. Uh, patch of the Month Club because it's awesome. You need to join it every month. You get a patch, a sticker, and a card, a sketch card that I don't know what Ryan does with those things. It's still the I like my turkey well peppered for this month. So just go check them out. Go join the Patch of the Month Club. I don't know, even know what it costs fifteen bucks a month or something. If it, and like this month, we got two patches. So you get bonuses every now and then. Uh, affiliates, discounts, show notes, website. You can find them all. You might want to blah, blah, blah. make sure, bookmark them so that, you know, come Black Friday, you can maybe get some even extra deals. You never know. I don't know exactly what will work and what won't. There's another new one we added. We added the Camerado one. So. We are do have it's five percent off for you know if you want want those crazy you know Sean Heron you know camo patterns or something. <laughs> I have I bought the Scout pattern. I bought the original oh. the original sweatshirt the original version sweatshirt and actually it's really nice. I like it. To yeah, I, I've got the sweatshirt and I've got the um, like the. The thin, uh, I call it the fishing shirt. Yeah, but, yeah, the button you know. up. Yeah, no, 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 it's not the button up. Oh, it's okay. Like a like the, the UV shirts. UV, yeah, yeah, UV shirt, and then a, uh, like a little lot jacket. Yeah, in yeah. The, in the scout pattern, and it blends in really well here, and I really like it. Yeah, like the one I got the original. It was I thought about getting a like darker green one. Cause it's pretty green around here, but I was like, nah, I just, I was like, nah, I like the original pattern. I did. However, he did send me one of the button up shirts. So I got the, you know, radical or whatever, the really bright one that isn't camo at all. But you know, I figure that way you guys can spot me easier at shot show. <laughs> so you get the, that crazy one, that clover tack that he did for clover tack. That, 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 I think, right. I think that might be the same one because it's, oh, is it? okay. <laughs> because it's not right. Because yeah, we, 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 we still need the one, our, our kilt in the street turn into a camel pattern. Well, you know, I could, you know, I could probably take that dude and we could probably figure something out. That's not a bad idea. <laughs> So yeah, I get I, it. I would I would I would buy numerous shirts like uh, that. <laughs> well, you know, that's that. Now Rob can tell us what we're supposed to not do. Don't do anything. Okay, that lurks. <laughs> the views and opinions expressed in this podcast are those of the individual co hosts and do not reflect the official policy or position of the firearms radio network and or their employers. Thank God. This is not legal advice, nor should it be considered as such. Viewer discretion is advised. This is especially true on live shows. And our product spotlight tonight is sponsored by Walker Defense Research. Walker Defense provides shooters with the finest, most innovative quality tactical accessories and firearm components around. From their Nile grip bonus to their Nero muzzle brakes, no details are ever left behind. Only top quality materials are used in the manufacturing process. Together, all of this gives you some of the best firearm performance around. Everything they have to offer is proudly made in the USA. Walker Defense, where American ingenuity meets bleeding edge technology. And our Walker Defense product of the week is their Dark Matter BCG. I'm guessing that's a bulk carrier group. It is. It's the oh my brand God. new high polish. Sexy. Yeah. Black oh, DLC. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> nice. You, and remember to use the code INSIDER15 for 15% off everything. At walkerdr.com. And since we don't have a review this week, Chad is going to start us with the Taurus 652 inch, yeah. whatever that is. It's a revolver. It's MSRP on that thing is $454.99. They do make a three inch. Uh, this is the blued version, but it's actually coated black. You would uh, go with the two inch. Well, yeah. <laughs> they make them in stainless also. So. And three inch. Uh, this is their new enclosed or redone enclosed hammer uh, snubby, basically, is what this is. It is 357 mag. So five shot, 
double action only because, of course, it's the hammer is encased in the cover, so you're not going to get to it. Of course, it'll it'll shoot 38 specials, 38 plus P's, and 357 Magnum. It is considered their small frame revolver, so the VZ grips will fit on it, which might have been why we put those grips in there. You know, it does have fixed rear sight, kind of normal serrated blade f- removable front sight, so maybe our other sponsor, Excess Sights, will make a sight for it. Uh, let's see. Two-inch barrel, 7.66-inch overall length. Overall height is 4.59 inches. Width is 1.36 inches, which is pretty good for a five-shot snubby. It weighs... Basically 23 ounces unloaded, alloy steel, matte black finish on everything. Uh, it does have a transfer bar safety, so which, you know, you can kind of expect. You know, I don't know about the new Rossi revolvers or Taurus revolvers, I should say, but the old ones, old I never hated, but so I'm hoping that the new snubbies are fairly decent. Uh, I haven't heard anything super bad about them more like their, some of their semi-auto pistols. Uh, You know, I guess it just kind of depends. I mean, price isn't terrible. And if you're looking for a hammerless, basically revolver, you know, it might be something to check out, you know. I don't know what the trigger pull is on it. Uh, If it's terrible, it doesn't even say how they don't even give you a rough estimate of what the 15 pound trigger feels like. (laughs) I I really don't know, but it's there. I thought it was kind of cool. It's something new to talk about because we're in the Christmas, no new product slump till shot show. And then everything will come out or, or some stuff might come out a few weeks before SHOT Show because that's kind of how it works. But what do you guys got on it? I I like it. I've had several Taurus revolvers that I really, I really, really like. Uh, probably 20 some odd years ago or longer, I, 30 years ago, I had the 66, which is the full size 357. It was great. And I've had the it's the 605 Poly, yeah, 357. Yeah, that was a little different. Uh, horrible trigger pull, but the gun ran flawlessly. And I've got several of the, the Model 85s, mm-hmm. the older versions and the newer versions, and I've never had an issue with any of them. Um, just like some of the – we talked about some of the semi-autos are questionable, you know, but I've seen people that love them and run them. But I think the the concealed hammer on this one is is, is really nice because I'm glad they brought that back out because that's always something I like in a defensive revolver is like you know I can I can stack that trigger up and shoot it just as well as I do if I shoot it single action. So if you're in a defensive purpose you know situation, you don't need a hammer. Yeah, that's and cool. and in in the case like this, if you're running it in a pocket holster or something. You know, the, having the hammer, not a covered hammer, you know, helps not get crap in there. Or even the slim chance that the hammer, even if it's a bobbed one, could catch on something or, you know, yeah, I like it. I'm not sure if it was Taurus or if it was Smith that did it, but they had the, they remember the one that, that was enclosed, but it had the little hammer, knurled hammer. Oh, yeah, piece. yeah. The, you could, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. So, I, I, I don't remember who that was. was that, 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 yeah, yeah, that was neat. That was neat. But I like it. Uh, I, I'm glad C Taurus is coming with it. I like the the two inch version for a pocket. And if I if I had this in three inch, that would be even better because I like a three inch three fifty seven magnum for defensive purposes. That's what my King Cobra is, and it's fantastic. Tony, you got anything on this? Well, I look at it like this: it's a Taurus, so it might be hit or miss. All right. It might be hit or miss with their quality control. It might be hit or miss with their build quality. Uh, They've stepped up some of their Taurus revolver stuff uh, in the last two years. Hopefully this is too. This is stepped up. Um, 
people talk about pocket carry and hammerless and all that. How's this? Stop carrying your damn pistol in your pocket. Put it in the fucking holster. Well, you carry it in the holster in your pocket. Oh, God, uh-huh. no. And then you just to dig it out of your pocket. Now, that yeah, only works holster. when you're standing up. <laughs> yeah. It works when you're standing up only, not when you're sitting down. Um, so now you have to depend on all kinds of perfect things to get that thing out of your pocket. I just don't see pocket carry as a good thing. Um, get belt carry, uh, get the thing from, uh, Sarah and her husband. Is it the Filster Enigma? Yeah, the Enigma. Get that. Get that. You can wear it in shorts. You can wear it with gym shorts. You can wear it in a bathing suit and it goes around your waist. And you actually have a place where the gun's always in the same spot. Not somewhere in your pocket <laughs> that you should be able to get to it. But only when you're standing up. Um, as far as this, I hope it works. But understand that ain't no shortcut. And if you're going to use a double action, you've got to learn to use a double action. Nothing cute about that. That's mm-hmm. a long trigger pull. The good part about using the double action only, you dry fire it, you can use it well, uh, you'll be able to shoot anything. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's that's true. That is true. Rob, you got anything more on this? The only thing I'll say, like Tony said, their their build quality and their uh, QC kind of sucked in the past. I hope it's doing better. It looks like an interesting revolver. It's got to be kind of fun to shoot, but again, as long as their build quality gets up to snuff, it's a seems like a decent price for what three fifty seven. Yeah, yeah. That's, you know, so that, that's all I got to say. Okay. Okay. That's all I got to say about that. Okay, Forrest, Forrest Rob. <laughs> Forrest, Forrest, Forrest Smith. My name is Gump, Forrest Gump. Okay. Uh, Forrest so, Grump. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I love you, Rusty. Kiss my butt. That was. The, uh, Life is like a box of guns. Hey, let's see. it's not bear season yet, Rob. Calm down. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, that's, I had to write it down for a show title, maybe. <laughs> Forrest Grump. Nice. Uh, so that was the that was the Taurus 650. Now, next up, and I'm glad Tony's here because he's got the base model of this. Hawk has come out with their Frontier 30 FD, which is the line there, one to eight by twenty four, with the LRX Tactical Reticle. MSRP is nine hundred ninety nine dollars. This is basically their top of the line ish low low power variable optic so it's it's similar in the one tony has i just which is their you know lower line just kind of like primary arms they have various lines of optics so this one has cap turrets you know multi led high intensity reticle you'll find out kind of that uh, throw a lever on the magnification. It is removable if you don't want it. 30 millimeter tube, uh, 100 millimeters of eye relief, which is pretty much about the same as everybody's. Uh, high volume eye box, they say. Low dispersion crown glass, multi coated lenses. It's got comes with metal flip up covers instead of the plastic cheap ones. Fast focus eyepiece. And the, this LRX tactical reticle is. The fiber dot system, so it's got their bright fiber optic dot in the center, uh, and it is made for drops for the 5.56 cartridge. And they give some, if you go to the more reticle information, it gives you a little bit more about the reticle, but it is a BDC reticle. Fiber dot, we know the dots are daylight bright, no matter what light you're looking at. Uh, Let's see fixed parallax, 11 levels of illumination, they say. Uh, eye relief, like they say, is four inches. They listed down here, 100 millimeters. Uh, half MOA adjustments, elevation and windage max is 300 MOA, so you can really get that thing up there if you really want to. Uh, let's see if it is second focal plane. So we will mention that it is 10.9 inches long, weighs 18.3 ounces, which is pretty good for something this quality. It does have their auto on auto illumination mode is what they call it. Their aim, uh, 
to extend the battery life, of course, after two minutes of no movement, it turns off. Then you move it and it turns back on, uh, which which is nice. And that's something you would kind of expect to have in something in this price range. Uh, I thought I saw somewhere that it was like Japanese glass, but don't quote me on that because I'm looking. Uh, maybe we'll because they sent a press release and that's why I'm looking at that over Japanese make good glass. Yeah. And I, but I'm not sure I'm trying to look at, look at, at, I actually like this optic and I do, I like the one to eight range. Uh, one to sixes are really nice. One to tens are depending on what you put it on. But I think for a five, five, six, uh, you don't probably need a one to 10. So I think this isn't scar rated. I bet it is. I, I bet they would they would warranty this because it's got a no fault right. lifetime warranty covering it for life. Doesn't matter what you put it on. So okay, if you guys want to send me one, I'll try it on my Scar Seventeen. Although it's three hundred eight, not five five six, but whatever. it's pretty. I mean, really, the drops on those are pretty close. Uh, they mention you can put it on there. Well, Rob, I will send them a message if you really want to see if I can get oh, one. Sure, of these. I'll okay. Tell you. <laughs> I like free ninety nine. That's my favorite price. I have the nine ninety nine. Yeah, free ninety nine. Yeah, no kidding. No kidding. Uh, what do you guys think about it? While well, I look to see if I can find, it looks interesting. I mean, it looks kind of cool. Other than it's, it's, it is second focal plane. I am kind of a first focal plane snob, but I can deal with second focal plane. <laughs> Tony's trying to call my BS, isn't he? Yeah, but he's dying over there. Oh my god, Tony, don't die so, on this. Uh, Not during your show. Well, that at least. was me. Yeah, that, that was me. me. That was trusty. I had my mute on. <laughs> yeah, okay. um, when when I was dying, um, so I got this uh, the lower one. I can say the glass is really clean. Um, I've taken it to now. Understand? I've only taken it out and shot it, zeroing it at an indoor range, and then taking it to the competition last year and this year uh, in November. Light gathering was really good. Uh, that red dot, it's dang near useless. I'm sorry, but it's so freaking small. It's it's now again. I'm shooting it at a hundred, and I just taken a tactical class. What in October, or or the last week of September, and compared to a red dot, that thing is tiny, teeny. It is because pen. they're like, what do they say? Point six to MOA or something. It, it is, it is invisible. So, um, it helped me center it on the target at a hundred yards on the eight inch, but understand the eight inch, the black part is like maybe six inches across, if not shorter, uh, smaller than six inches. It is not huge. So that helped me kind of pinpoint my aiming point, but it's nothing like a red dot whatsoever. And I don't even think it has to be. I mean, seriously, you can just run this thing. Uh, I like it, but this is my actual first big boy optic, and this is not even the expensive one. This was what three ninety nine. Yeah, I think those are think? those are in the three fifty to three ninety nine. I mean, I could look yeah. at yeah, the MSRP is like three ninety nine on this one. So I and like you said, it's it's clear glass, and that's the one thing. Like I had reviewed the one that Tony has, and then you know I didn't need it, and Tony was looking for one, and so I just sent it over to him because might as well. And so he, he got it and he could, he can tell how clear it is. So I can guess that, you know, the one that's their top of the line one is going to have even better glass than the one that Tony is looking at. So, so I like the fact that it has, uh, even when you do turn it up, though, it does have the uh, illumination dial set up. I think this one says it has sh automatic shut off. Yeah, it, it's uh, which is cool. Oh, yeah, because the low, low base model one that you have does not. It does not. Correct. Uh, ended up having to put a new battery in it because somehow I left it on. What? what it yeah, I, I um, mean, I get, I get you. Well, yeah, I carry them in the bag anyway. And and the actually, good I need to order more. The good thing is, is it's got a reticle. So if the battery dies, you're not, you're out, the, as you say, the tiny dot. <laughs> yeah, you're out of a tiny dot. It really made no difference. But it, again, I am new to shooting with an optic. 
I didn't really have any bad experience with this one, so I enjoyed it. So I'm assuming that the, the more expensive one with the options that it has would be even better than this. So I don't yeah. see anything wrong with it. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. Uh, Rob likes it. He wants to test it on his scar. So, uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Rusty's falling asleep, so I don't know if he even knows what's going on. <laughs> well, no, I'm listening. I, I've never, I've never looked through anything from Hawk, so I really don't. I mean, it's got some pretty decent features. I like the the reticles, all the different reticles they have. But other than that, I don't know anything about them. Well, and that that's the thing is, is Hawk the Hawk optics. All the ones I've seen are nice, and they they tended to be more hunting style until they. they the last few years they've started bringing out more tactical style models so that's kind of why i threw it in here i was like oh this is interesting they do have a different reticle in it also but i don't remember which one it is so you know (laughs) we can always figure that out later uh but that was the hawk frontier 30 you can look it up or click through it in the show notes you'll find it But that leads us to Primary Arms. They seek to provide you the best shopping experience for everything firearms. They have a smorgasbord of products from your favorite brands, including a complete selection of rifles, handguns, firearm parts, and shooting gear. Every order comes with a commitment to superior service, fast shipping, and an expert support team. Don't forget to check out their line of Primary Arms Optics, too. Now... Our primary arms product of the week this week is the Wheeler Fat Sticks. These are uh, basically torque wrenches that you just put on any screwdriver, and they have preset torques. And if I remember right, they're pretty darn cheap for what they are. Uh, not that they make a ton of expense. It's like 88 bucks, and you get like one, two, three, four, five at like 15 25, 35, 45 inch pounds. So basically for mounting optics, stuff like that. Yeah, I thought they were pretty cool and something useful unless you get one of the actual adjustable torque wrenches. Uh, yeah, I got the fat, the fat torque wrench. I love it. That's, that's what I have too. And I use it all the time. And I, you know, I got it and then I was like, I actually got this one on clearance because it was when the new versions were coming out. And I was like, so I got it dirt cheap, and I was like, this thing's fantastic, and I use it so much. But you can find everything else you need, including the Wheeler Fat Sticks, by heading over to primaryarms.com. That leads us into the EAA Gerson Brat. MSRP on this thing is $679. That thing is cheap. <laughs> I wonder what street price will be on this considering, but what this is, is there is, this is their witness 2311 nine millimeter or 45 ACP. It is an officer size double stack 1911, except it's not really because an officer size has a smaller grip frame. This is still running the standard grip frame with a capacity of 17 plus one does have a pick rail on the front. It's a bull barrel because in these short guns that, works better extended beaver tail flared magwell all that comes standard uh blue black finish weighs 1.4 pounds overall length is seven inches it's a 3.4 inch barrel uh they show the nine millimeter 45 let's see if they just, they don't change the capacity on that but we know that it goes down a little bit <laughs> so let's see if i'm missing an ambi safety Uh, it does have a sight system, but it is not, I believe this particular version is not optics ready. It is not, uh, but it's got all those things. I don't know how many mags it comes with, probably one or two, Eh, you know, yeah, it's an 11 round 45 ACP magazine. So depending on what you're looking for. I saw this and I was like, you know, I like how everybody's coming out with double stack 1911s. The only thing, except like with this, this is not what I want. If I'm going to, if I'm going to have a grip frame, that's a full size grip frame, give me a full size gun or 
Yeah, it looks like somebody took a sawzaw to a 1911. I, I mean, it looks like they took a 2011 oh, five inch or yeah, and cut an inch and a half off the barrel. Oh, it's, it, it's like, no, give me the longer barrel if I get a full grip frame. Cut some off the grip frame. Give me a 15 round grip frame and a four inch barrel. I mean, come on, give me something I want. But the price is good if you're really looking for carrying something this size. Go for it. Okay, who else has stuff on it? I I, I don't understand it. I, I don't understand the short barrel and the grip frame. That's what I don't understand. It looks unproportional. Uh, yes. Um, I I couldn't really find anything about this. Just a few. This this would be like the analog of taking a Glock 34 slide to a Glock 17 frame. No, it'd be a Glock 26 slide on a so on a, on a yeah. 17 frame. Yeah. Yeah. Well, whatever so, those stupid numbers are they use for Glocks, but it's like, God almighty. I know. I've fired several of the Gersons. I've owned a few of them, and, and they've been phenomenal guns. I mean, it's one of the I mean, firms in Turkey that put out good firearms. Right. Hopefully this is, but I know like the shorter you go with 1911s, the harder it is to get them to run. Mm-hmm. So that was, that's the only concern that I have with it. Like you said, if you're going for shorty, why wouldn't you cut off the short, shorten the frame, shorten the, uh, the frame to make it easier to conceal, but whatever. Yeah. That's, that's why I right, was so confused, but go on. Tony. Well, this thing, Tony says we're all idiots. So I've checked out, uh, the 2311s because I've been talking to Gerson a lot, get some of their guns in and everything, uh, except the usual people that don't give a review because they love everything. So every gun is great. But anybody that actually shoots these guns have problems with Gerson 2311s. Every single one. There has not been one review by anybody that actually puts rounds through them uh, that said that that gun worked well. Everything from what's the safety pulling off of it to the fact it has an over eight pound trigger pull. And it's a uh, 1911. Yeah. A 1911 with an eight pound trigger pull is something that, uh, uh, Taurus does. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, just ridiculous. So I look at it this way. You don't want this, um, until they figure out how to better fix these particular firearms. Especially if, they, if they're having trouble with four and a half, four inch and five inch versions, yeah. four and a half and five inch, they have problems with it. This is good. Apple is the barrel. Exactly. Even shorter so, barrel. Yeah, so my suggestion, if you want a double stack nine millimeter from Gersant, uh, get their Browning high power, uh, the PI lightweight, and uh, I think that would be a better option uh, because it has a whole lot. Of, yeah, the uh, Gersant high power MC P thirty five PI LW. Uh, yeah. I think that would be a better small gun. Uh, you'll have more holster options because that's also something you're going to run into uh, with this croissant. Give me a second. Tony's, Tony, Tony's a professional. He muted himself when he had to cough, and we didn't realize Rusty so, is not. Yeah. So, <laughs> No, I, I choked myself on my drink. That's oh, okay. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, he almost died. So, um, yeah, you'll have better holster options going with the high power. Uh, you'll have the option of an optic going with the high power. You'll have more magazine choices going with the high power. So I look at the high powers uh, from Gerson. So it's not like I'm going, oh, everything that makes it horrible. But this 2311 has not added up to anything. And if you really want a 2311 in this price range, the only one I ever heard good things about is, um, excuse me, I've not heard anything about anything this small being good because it's a problem when you cut the barrel down from 1911 this small. Uh, I heard is CS from Staccato is good, but there are not a lot of reviews on that either. And then sometimes those dudes are questionable, the ones that do give good reviews to Staccato because Staccato's cutting checks yeah. and giving away $2,500 guys. You know how do so we get in on this? Effect. How do we get in on, on this giving away twenty five hundred dollars? You know what? I don't even want you now because if I get a staccato and it's good, I just sound like the rest of them. That's true. You you need the bad one. You know what I mean? 
Yeah. It's like, yeah, I need I need to get the bad staccato so I can freaking send it back <laughs> and see your problems with it. Uh, so um, this just period uh, 1911 this length, they're questionable. But if you want one, if you want to get one, Rock Island has one and they've been getting good reviews on it. And it's but it's a 10 shot. So it's called the yeah, BDR. Yeah. We talked uh, about it once. Three. Yeah. Yep. 3.0. Yeah. yeah so, so. so I checked that out and I watched a bunch of reviews on that and everybody says it's good. And then uh, right. you can <clears throat> adjust uh, para ordinance mags to fit it. So nice. that's something you can check out. Yeah. Sounds good. So that is the Gerson Witness 2311 Brat. Uh, that leads us into something a little different. Uh, Meteorite Concepts, new company, has their pivot adapter and M-lock mount. I put the, they have a pick rail mount or something also, but I put the M-lock one in here because that's all that matters. Uh, these are flashlight scout mount adapters. Uh, the pivot adapter is 38 bucks and the M-lock mount is 35 bucks. So for 70 bucks, basically, you can set this system up. What it does is it gives you a pivot for your light. So depending on if you want to fold it down so it's flat or if you want to kind of raise it up into a different spot, it gives you that ability to lock it in in different positions or maybe because you can't get a mount that does what you want with like because you're running a laser and various other things. So you need this to space it out a diff, different way or you can fold it so it's right up against the laser. There's a lot of different options with it and I can see a use for it. Like for me, I don't have that much crap on the front of my rifle so it doesn't matter. But I really did like how they do this. Of course, they show some little diagrams on their website. It weighs like like an ounce total by the time you get both pieces 6061 aluminum, black anodized, made in the USA, of course. Uh, like I said, it you know, they say it's compatible with M lock and Picatinny Pro mounts, depending on which one you want. But yeah, and they give you a list of all the scout mount lights that it can use or anything, you know. 0.85 inches apart, I guess, is what they're considering it. But you guys get the idea. You have a light. You need a mount. You need a mount that moves. Then you can get this thing. Looks nice. I can see some uses for it. I just thought, hey, this is kind of cool. I'll put it in here. What do you guys think about this thing? I actually bought a power tack lot here a while back. And I've got mounted on my um, one of my AR pistols that come. It comes with this mount, not this company, but a mount identical to this, similar that just, that pivots. Yes, that pivots. And um, I had never seen one until then. I was trying to look up the model number where you were talking, right? And um, but it is it's it's a really cool design. It works out really well. Because uh, you can move the light depending on you know how you know where you want the the, the beam at. Because that's something I played with when I got it. Is like, well, let me see where the where the flood is on it. You know, let me, let me adjust it out a little bit. And I like it. I think it's nice. You can tighten it down. You can move it wherever you need to. You just you know. But yeah, it's, it was funny that you put that in there because I I've got one something similar. It works out well. Yeah. I, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Uh, Tony, you got anything on it? So, I picked, oh yeah, I picked up something like this, but it was from Fab Defense, and it was for uh, regular rail. Uh, it's called a PLR Adjustable Tactical Light Mount. It's one piece. Uh, you know, it's one piece. It wasn't a couple, and again, it, you can flip it up. You can do it 90 degrees. You can move it around because... You know, sometimes you have other stuff on the gun. You got sights, whatever the frig. Um, but you want it higher up. If you do a C-clamp or whatever, however you hold it, you want it higher. I put it on. 
you got to find one position and leave it in it. And that's right. But, but you're not going to be moving it around. A yeah, lot. and and that's the thing is, is it's. Not, I think that's what this is for. It's not so you can move it around. It's because you can get the light right where you want it, as opposed to yeah. With with others, you're just set at like a forty five or straight, or you can mount it on three three six nine o'clock or whatever. Well, a lot of them also depend on you know how many uh, what your hand guard is like. Mm-hmm. How many cutouts for your hand guard? Do you have something only three nine and six, three nine twelve and six? You know what I mean? Or do yeah. you have like a bigger hand guard you have in those in betweens? I think it's something you should look at. But the only problem, excuse me, only concern, it's not even a problem. And, of course, I wish new companies the best. But once you start putting two pieces together and then you put those two pieces on something and then you clamp something in it, you have a lot of parts that have to stay connected. Right, because in, you know, you gotta, in this case, you're adding that pivot as, the, as a point of failure. <laughs> now, granted, I yep. don't. And I get what you're saying because I look at it and I'm like, yeah, you're gonna, it's gonna add that in. Sometimes, you know, it looks pretty stout. It doesn't be an aluminum, I in a decent bolt. I think, I think it'd be okay. But yes, as Tony says, you're still, you, it still does add at least one point of failure. Uh, mm-hmm. I only say one sure. because pay attention to your gear. Yeah, pay attention to your gear. Take classes. Shoot them in competition. Because when you're moving, shooting, and bumping into stuff, stuff becomes loose, and you got to pay attention to it. That's all. Uh, we've all taken classes, and, and there's a big difference between just taking it out the truck or, or the vehicle, taking it to the table, and shooting it at the square range, and putting it back in the bag, and actually running yeah. the class. Exactly. Yes. My and, first thought with this was, I'd like to. This looks interesting, but I'd like to try it in a couple of classes before I. Give it a review. Yep, know? yep, yep, and and that makes perfect yeah, sense. Because things, th- this is what happens with your stuff when you don't touch it and you only use it for home defense. <laughs> Screws become loose and batteries die. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Yep, yep. I, I was good. well when you brought that up, and just the other day I had something that I was doing, and I I checked it after I came back from the range, and I think it I think it was a QD an M lock QD mount and it had loosened up a little bit. And I was like, Oh, I better tighten that baby up. So, I mean, and like things work differently on, in a class than on a square range. Like Tony was saying, I mean, you can take this and run it on a square range all you want, but when you take a class with it and you got to move the light around or do, or manipulate your firearm, I mean, things will work a lot differently than you think they'll work. Yep. Yep. Well, now the cool thing about this being able to move, <clears throat> when you do run a class and they make you do some ball pad stuff or you're moving around corners, you may be able to have more options with your light than somebody else does with theirs. Yeah. And if but you're running it all, you may yeah. be able to swippy swap. Swippy swappy your things just by loosening it and flipping it. And now you have something and it was done like this instead of having to take it all the way off, pull it out, mm-hmm. spin it around, put it back on and put it ma- mount it again. Yeah. It is what it is, man. Best of luck with the company. I wish them luck. It seems like they got good ideas. Um, and hopefully these things are sturdy. Yeah. Hey, send a brother one. <laughs> Tony loves free Send me one, send a couple so we can give them away. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is the end of that stuff. So now, for over 25 years, Excess Sites has helped you get on target faster. They offer tritium sites in all different types and styles. Low light is no longer an obstacle. Most options come with a brightly colored colored photoluminescent ring around that tritium. That colored ring makes them work great in the daylight too. Excess sights has sight styles for everyone's big dots, coast rings, standard notch and post, minimalist, suppressor height, all offering tritium options. Available for a plethora of firearm types from shotguns to handguns, Excess sights has you covered for all your low light sighting needs. Now, our Access Sights product of the week this week is their Minimalist Night Sights for Springfield Armory, which also works for Ross Martins but <laughs> uh, and a few various others out there. You can use the code GGR20 for 20% off almost everything over at accesssites.com. And don't forget to head over to our 
don't shoot Santa giveaway at firearmsinsider.tv slash giveaway. You can sign up to win one of the, some of the DX two pros. Uh, we will draw, I will draw a number name, whatever on the last day of November. So you guys might be getting a Christmas present or not just depends. So don't have any listener feedback that, takes us back to Tony and we'll see if he can make it through this without coughing. Yeah. Good luck with that. So Thursday we have a diversity shoot in Lakewood at we shoot sucker already sold out, but we only have two more spots. Uh, somebody actually contacted the range and said they won't be able to use their two tickets. So we got two spots left so you can come through. Uh, still going to pay for a ticket though. Uh, what else? Because they may show up, and I don't give refunds. Yes, we we do not give refunds. We ain't about that life. You say you come and show up. Uh, we also have a diversity shoot scheduled for December fifth at Union Hill Gun Club. Look forward to seeing you guys there. The tickets are online. I think we've sold about half the tickets. And then the last event of the of the year is December nineteenth at Gun for Hire Range. So we only have three more of these events left. One is um, sold out, and one is halfway sold out. So please, come to the diversity shoots. Uh, we look forward to seeing you there. If you want to donate, please contact us at diversityshoot.com or make a donation at diversityshoots.com. We have PayPal links there, and if you want to use anything else, you let me know. We even have uh, Patreon. So that's it. I really appreciate it. If you want to follow us and see what we're doing, go to Instagram, Simon Says Train. Facebook, Simon Says Train. Also, you can find us at Facebook at Second is for Everyone or on X at Second for Everyone using the numbers. Yeah. So I really appreciate it. Thank you for helping us out. And uh, X is growing really quick. Uh, so if you want to join us there, we're picking up followers there. Like, I mean, we've almost matched our uh, Instagram following and it took us about a year to go from maybe a thousand to almost 8,000 in less than a year. At the same time, I think we got 50 people joining us on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. If you want to follow us, do I, I post some stuff on there and I do my little self-defense axioms and stuff like that on X. So thanks a lot. Really appreciate it. Yeah. So d- next week is our curse Christmas gift guide episode. So you, Either want to tune in or listen on Black Friday or actually, I think I'm probably going to release it on Thanksgiving day just so you guys can get it a a day early. So if you're sitting around being bored, you can listen to it, you know, on Thanksgiving, you know, but you can send us questions, comments or feedback to gungearreview at gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us an iTunes review or any of your other podcast players. We find them sometimes. Be sure to visit the Firearms Insider at firearmsinsider.tv. And as Tony said, you can check us out on Facebook, X, and Instagram at Firearms Insider because, you know, X is the growing platform that doesn't throttle you down. Uh, Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you can get notifications when, you know, we go live if you want to watch the live shows or if I happen to actually upload a video or something like that. And... Thank you for listening to the largest pound for pound podcast on the network. And we are out. Epstein did kill himself. I hear a PD's having a sale on baby oil. Gideon Optics says thanks for supporting the Firearms Radio Network. Check out their rifle optics like the Guardian LPVO and pistol optics like the Omega and Rock. Fair prices and great performance on whatever optics you need. Visit GideonOptics.com, where affordability meets quality. Save 10% with code FRN10. Now, listen to another podcast.